thought about becoming a full-time YouTuber? Uh, yes, I have thought about doing this full-time. I was doing the math based on like the metrics I have or the channel uh, kind of details and also like uh, how much money I've been earning from doing the videos on the channel and Hi, my name is Ashraf. I go by Ashraf D. Chaz on YouTube. I am a designer by day, but I do YouTube content by night. So Ashraf, you mentioned that you are a designer by day. Can you tell us more about your job as a designer? So yes, uh, uh, by day I'm a designer. I do a lot of uh, different design works, both freelance and also for my day job. Uh, right now I'm doing a lot of branding work for a few clients here and there. Uh, and I've been, I recently got into like UI UX and product design which is where I met Crystallize for the first time and that's how we connected uh, and it's all been like a great learning tool I would say uh, improving myself day to day as a designer doing like illustration work, graphic design and you know, all the other things that relate to graphic design essentially Yeah, I really love Ashraf's creativity and it really shows in his work So Ashraf, can you tell us more about your other hustle as a YouTuber or do you view it more as a hobby? So when I first started doing uh, the YouTube channel Ashraf D Chess, uh, it was it started off a little bit like a hobby, started like a passion project, I would say, um, based on the topic. I love One Piece, I love card games, and it was a, a topic like you know, that combines both my love together. Uh, but it kind of started to gain traction at least during the first year because I was one of the first few people who did it, and people didn't really know about the One Piece card game. Uh, so I started. You know, doing content about it, talking about it, every single piece of news I just started talking about it and then it sort of became a almost like a part-time job for me. I would have I did all my day stuff uh, till like I clock out and then I'll have dinner and then I'll start like recording all the way till maybe like about 12, 1 a.m. and then post it out. So it started off as a hobby, it kind of became a second job after a while. Yeah. How much time and effort does it take for you to plan and produce your videos? Like if you have to give an estimate in terms of a daily or weekly basis. So I think when it comes to people who do like content for YouTube, there are people who curate plan for the month and also like uh, there are people who kind of do it reactionary. Like if something comes out, then they'll do something. I'm more of the latter kind. Uh, so if there's a piece of news that comes out, I want to react to it. And uh, that's when I'll usually plan my videos. I usually do have like a content timeline on a month-to-month -month basis but um, usually there's stuff that's coming out like week by week and if it's something exciting that I think the community wants to talk about then I'll be the one talking about it. Uh, it used to be about the max four times a week and that was during my peak. I was churning vids like crazy. They weren't crazy long one, they weren't crazy edited. Um, it was about like maybe like five to seven minutes videos, just me talking, sitting in front of the camera and talking. Uh, right now it's a little bit uh, right now it's about once or twice a week depending if I have the time um, I spend a little more time curating and editing a video just to make it more presentable for a new viewer um, but yeah so last time for now one or once or twice do you find it tough juggling both jobs okay uh, yes pretty much uh, what, mainly because of the time issues um, generally, I, I I love doing design work uh, because uh, it allows me to be creative in my own way. But when there's a big news that just drops, like suddenly it drops and on like a Friday night, and I have to kind of like, oh, I have to rush to record and edit. And that usually eats into kind of my personal time. Uh, and that's the kind of hard part about kind of maintaining a consistent schedule across it for you do. It's like sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of your personal time, but it depends on how much you really want it. For me, it's more, it started off like being, I'm passionate about the game. I like, I like the One Piece card game. I want to talk about it because it's my favorite things. Um, right now, it's more of like I want to make sure that I have a consistency in terms of like upload schedule and also the quality of the videos. And it's been a struggle kind of maintain both, especially when you're trying to stick to doing your job properly and also maintaining a, a standard for your videos. Um, but it, you know, as long as you plan properly and you dedicate some time towards it, I think it should be fine. Have you ever thought about becoming a full-time YouTuber? Uh, yes, I have thought about doing this full-time. I was doing the math based on like the metrics I have or the channel uh, kind of details and also like uh, how much money I've been earning from doing the videos on the channel and it's gonna take a lot more
to get to a place where I can sustainably do this full time. Uh, which is why people always say like you know the top YouTubers like anything above one hundred thousand subscribers is like the the one percent of like the YouTube content creators. I mean there are exceptions here and there, but um, yeah, it, it will take a lot more effort and a lot more time to do this full time feasibly. So as of now, I'll just treat it like you know if it grows to that level, sure that's great. But I'm gonna just take my time in growing the channel and yeah, do it part time for now. Truth be told, it's not really sustainable to be a YouTuber in Singapore? Uh, it depends. I wouldn't say it's completely out of the picture. There are like proven cases. I mean, we got my, uh, we got my man Sneaky Sushi, we got the Daily Catch-Up Podcast, uh, of course the Jen House and the Wild Bananas. They are kind of like the, I would say, the example of successful companies slash personalities that became uh, a full-time YouTubers. But they, that's because you know their content caters to uh, the people in Singapore wants to watch. Uh, what, what the people in Singapore wants to watch? Uh, it caters to that target demographic, and people support them, and that's great. Uh, what I'm doing is very, very small and very, very niche. It's not for everyone. It's for card game players, TCG players, and generally my audience comes from the United States and Germany for some reason. Um, so I cater my content towards them. So yes, there are Singaporean people who watches my channel, but. Uh, it's not to the extent and scale of something like of someone like, like Wild Banana or Jen Hao. However, I heard that doing a niche channel is the way to succeed in YouTube. Based on your experience, do you think that's true? Uh, I, I do believe that's the case. Like the more niche you are, the more uh, like a the more curated your slice of the market of the YouTube space is. Like for example, I have a very specific target audience. Uh, people who like One Piece and people who like card games and people who like One Piece and card games. That's like the people I'm targeting. Um, and because I was one of the first few who did content for that particular niche, I managed to kind of uh, get a good uh, audience going. Uh, if someone wants to be a generalist or just talking about daily events and stuff like that, you would have to compete with a lot of people out there. So the, the kind of the more niche your content is, the less competition you have but the less audience you can potentially reach out to. So that's a trade-off right now. Wow, very insightful tips. Thank you so much. YouTube masterclass, right? Now. Yeah, it's like a YouTube masterclass. So the way you were talking about it seems like you enjoy that part of growing your channel, finding the right content, for example. Is that the most enjoyable part of YouTube for you? Or is there something else that you enjoy as well? Uh, I think that's one aspect. I. Uh, I mean, I don't look like it, but I really enjoy the, I would, I would call it like the YouTube meta game. I enjoy looking at what popular YouTubers are doing, how they structure their content, uh, how they even do their thumbnails, how they title their videos, all of these like data and um, how meticulous they can get when it comes to creating the content and also like the target audience, the views, the likes and dislikes ratio. There's uh, different trends that keep on happening in the YouTube space and I enjoy looking at all of them because I am primarily a YouTube consumer. Uh, I've been watching like YouTube content creators for like so many years. Um, mostly in the TCG space but also like you know you got your Mr. Beast, you got your PewDiePie's and all of that. Um, and there's a lot of uh, insights that you can learn from someone that's trying to uh, grow uh, YouTube as a career. There's a lot of steps that you have to take and also like um, the way they format and edit their videos are very important as well. So I have a friend that I've been talking to. He's also like a YouTuber that recently just passed like 100k subs and he has been uh, giving me a lot of insights in terms of what to do as a YouTuber to grow your channel. I've been trying to implement it. Uh, it has been working but it's uh yeah there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done um but i enjoy it because it's like it's very interesting to see this is a very curated different market in terms of like you're doing like a day job kind of thing there's a lot of uh, research that you can do and techniques that you can implement to your own content to kind of make it even better wow so if you want to grow your channel make sure to check ashra's channel out just copy what i do sometimes i don't know <laughs> on that note, do you ever copy content from other YouTubers? I would say that I take inspiration from a lot of YouTubers that I enjoy, personalities that I enjoy. So I think I never really told anyone this, but uh, one of my favorite YouTubers or personalities on YouTube is Ludwig. 
um, just the way that he structures his commentary on like events is the way that I do it for like card game news. Um, essentially, you know, you have a topic at hand, you talk about it a little bit, you expand on it, and then you give your own thoughts, and then that's it. And the way that you structure, you make it very entertaining. That it's just you and in front of a camera, just talking about something, and it can be. Uh, entertaining. You don't necessarily have to watch it. You can use it as a listening aid at the background when you're doing work. That's how I uh, always sort of like frame my videos. I want it to be something that people listen to while they work. So I've been copying, I guess, that kind of style for from Ludwig for uh, for my content. Yeah, that's what I would. Wow, I feel like I learned a lot just from listening to that. If you don't mind sharing, perhaps could you tell us the range of what someone who wants to be a YouTuber would earn? So, for example, if you have a hundred to one thousand subs, what will you be earning? Or if you don't mind, what is the range that you are earning based on the number of subscribers that you currently have? Okay, so at a kind of basic metric cost, every one thousand views a channel has earns them.